The coronavirus is not just a global pandemic, it's also an infodemic. In other words, there are so many random rumors floating around, people getting misinformation from WhatsApp forwards, that this infodemic is only triggering more panic. So we at Mojo have decided to start a Corona Tracker. Every day, we will bring you one scientific survey or fact, one piece of information that is only from a verified source and that we believe to be valuable information. Remember, this will be facts first and strictly science. Today, we take a look at the very, very significant Imperial College Corona study that actually pushed President Donald Trump and Prime Minister Boris Johnson into acting. Led by a team of researchers headed by Professor Neil Ferguson, the Imperial College Corona study actually looked at three different scenarios and looked at how the virus could play out depending on how governments act or do not. The first scenario was if the governments did nothing at all, took the coronavirus casually. And let's face it, this is how a large part of the world was initially reacting, pretending that this was something that was happening in China or in South Korea and that we didn't have to concern ourselves with it at all. In this scenario where governments would have acted casually and they did initially, this is what the Imperial College survey says would have happened. 2.2 million Americans would have died according to the study and an estimated 510,000 people would have died in the United Kingdom. And for every 30 patients who needed critical care, which is an ICU bed, only one would have been available. Now imagine that scenario. It's a dark, dark, horrible scenario. And we have now read that it was when these figures were shown to Trump and Johnson that the heads of both of these countries decided that they had to go into urgent action. Now, the same Imperial College survey actually looks at the second scenario, which is what happens when governments try to mitigate the coronavirus spread with reasonable, moderate restrictions on how we live. Here's what the Imperial College survey says would happen in the light of reasonable restrictions. Now, what do we mean by reasonable restrictions? Let's take a look at how the Imperial College study actually defines this. Of course, social distancing is at the heart of it. It also talks about keeping the population that is above 70 years of age indoors. And it talks about those with symptoms self-quarantining for at least a week. The Imperial College researchers argue that if all of these were to happen efficiently, then the demand for ICU beds for critical care could come down by two thirds and the projected deaths would be halved. However, take a look at this figure. The demand for ICU beds would still be eight times higher than capacity. Now, obviously, we're looking at a situation where even scenario two is not good enough. So the Imperial College researchers then look at scenario three, which is when there is very, very drastic mitigation by governments and when there is a much stricter formalized lockdowns of towns and cities. And this is what the Imperial College survey then defines as drastic mitigation. This would involve isolating all people with any symptoms, even if they haven't been tested and found to be confirmed carriers of the coronavirus. It would involve schools and colleges being shut for at least five months. It would mean reducing everyone's social contact by 75%. It is only in this scenario of drastic mitigation that the Imperial College report says that hospitals could cope. But it then asks a question at what cost? Because the economy will be debilitated. And also, of course, there's a question of what people who are grappling with other diseases do. What happens to them? If they can't step out, if there is this kind of very enforced widespread lockdown, where do they go? And even with this drastic mitigation, the Imperial College researchers argued that this may not mean the end of a second wave of infections. So these are the three critical scenarios that the Imperial College report painted. Now, at the heart of this, we understand why social distancing is what every government, including India's own, are pushing. 
The Prime Minister spoke of a Janta curfew because really the only antidote till there is a vaccine or till there is a set of medicines that work in treatment as therapeutics, the only answer, literally the only answer is social distancing and self-isolation. What we're really doing here is giving our health system breathing space to not overburden our critical care system. And in India, this becomes more important than ever before, given the capacity that we have. Take a look at how many ICU beds per population there are in some of these countries. In Italy, 12.5 ICU beds per 1 lakh people. In USA, that number is much higher, 34.2 beds. In China, 3.6 beds. And in India, just 2.3 beds. So once again, if we look at this, we understand what governments across the world, including here in India, are trying to do. At the moment, in the absence of a vaccine, we may not be able to stop the coronavirus, but what we're trying to do is to stop the pace at which it spreads so that our critical care, public health systems, and even private hospitals can have breathing space and can have coping capacity, which is why from Prime Minister Modi to Donald Trump to Boris Johnson to literally every single global leader, the urge and the call is for social isolation. And the final irony about this Imperial College report, the one that got America and the United Kingdom to act, Neil Ferguson himself has now been diagnosed with the coronavirus. We wish him a speedy recovery. Remember, on the Corona Tracker, we will bring you facts first and strictly science.